Namaste. Hari Om. My name is Carol, Carol Figares. And we're together today to learn about the kleshas. Uh, so the kleshas are, we have five, description of five kleshas through the yoga uh, sutras of Patanjali. There is also, uh, they are also described on the Buddhist teachings. For the purpose of our uh, yoga teachings, we'll use the definition of the understanding the Patanjali gives in the Yoga Sutras. So the kleshas are the result of illusions. They are the illusions, the negative emotions and state of mind. They are afflictions, and they're also called poisons that create suffering. So the kleshas create suffering and they are the result of illusions. It is to dispel the ignorance that we practice yoga. So the yoga teachings, the yogic path, the yogic uh, lifestyle. Uh, it is practiced in order to dispel the illusion, the veil of maya. Maya is the veil of what is not real. Okay, the illusion of what is not real. And the... Um, through also the kleshas, you can connect it with the koyas, which is the layers. You have different layers from the more superficial, the physical layer, up to the more um, deep or intimate, until you get to the self. The self is the pure consciousness, okay? The pure light, the source of all creation. That is the real essence, the real self. Uh, be, all of the, the five kleshas are interconnected. So from the first klesha, it comes the other ones. So the first klesha is ignorance. From ignorance of the self, for not understanding what is the truthful uh, uh, essence of the self, it comes egoism. From egoism, it comes attachment, and it comes hate or dislike. And from that comes also fear, fear of death, fear of losing this physical body. So the first uh, klesha is avidya. Uh, avidya is translated as ignorance, at not to see or not to understand. Um, it is when a person is identifying itself, uh, him or herself with the mortal parts of the self, with the parts of yourself that are dying. Since we were born into this earth, into this planet, we begin to die, right? Our cells decay, everything goes in a degenerative because it's the process of life. If you identify yourself with the mortal body, with the identity of um, I am my profession, I am the relationship I have. I am the daughter of somebody. I am the mother of someone. I live in this country and this is who I am. This is my nationality. Uh, this is my heritage. And yes, those are part of the identity for that particular life existence that you have today. But this is not you. The essence of the self is the never ending an ever-expanding, never-changing, ever-expanding consciousness. So, consciousness doesn't have a beginning or an end. It just is. It's through creation that you are here and that you will continue to be. So, the avidya is the ignorance. It's um, assuming yourself with a false identity of what you think you are. And this, of course, will create suffering because you have a relationship and you're happy in this relationship. For some reason, this relationship ends or the person leaves or something happened and then you will feel broken, destroyed and complete because you are so much uh, identified with the connection with that person or with the job or the career that you have that if that vanishes, it will create suffering. And that's why it's good to understand the essence within you is Pure Satchitananda, okay? With pure Satchitananda means pure bliss, a state of uh, absolute contentment and happiness no matter the circumstances, no matter the external situation. So, 
we start with avidya, which is ignorance of the self. Um, the second klesha is asmita, is the ego, egoism. Um, the ego uh, builds a false sense of identity. It is connected again with the first one. So they go together, right? The false perception that you are this body and you are this mind. So you are very much uh, representing yourself through the idea of I. I am this name. I am this person. Me. Me and myself. My things. My possessions. Okay? Through asmita, through ego, through egoism, it, the, uh, you have uh, also other negative emotions that come through that, like judgment, competition, jealousy. Um, no, no wanting to share with others, no wanting others to thrive or be happy because that uh, hurts your ego, hurts uh, the identity that you have with your false self. So we have avidya, which is ignorance. From avidya comes asmita, which is the ego. Uh, living in this way, in a, in a way that you are only trying to satisfy your personal self and not understanding that we all in communion with the same source. We all unify through the same, um, so through the same spark, right? We're all the one through the same spark. So that's why it is said that we practice the yogi teachings because it begins to bring awareness on how or when are you acting this way. You can kind of correct and go back to the path and being like, okay, no, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm talking through my ego, my, my, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking, I'm acting through my ego instead of being on the opposite, talking or acting through unification, through communion, through cooperation instead of competition. So the second one is Asmita. The third klesha is called Raga. And Raga means attachment. Of course, if you identify yourself, as we were speaking, with the house that you have, with the relationship, the job, um, the person that you believe to be, you're going to be attached to those things. You don't want them to go. You don't want them to disappear because you feel that you need in all of those things in order to be happy. Again, we come back to the concept of Satchitananda. Your essence is already in a happiness mode and the blissful mode. You just can't recognize it, you just can't see it. So when you apply constantly raga, attachment, uh, you can see the impermanence of each moment. And you're looking constantly to have external gratification. So you must understand that one thing that is um, constant is the impermanence the change, the transformation. So if things change, if change, things transform, then you have to go with the flow of things. You can't be attached to one thing that makes you happy and, uh, and try to fight your way to don't let this thing go because you believe that that's gonna bring you suffering. You gotta allow uh, life to unfold and to transform and take its course on its own. Okay, and that's why you can be so attached to those external gratification things that they are not your real essence. Uh, you can enjoy them, you can enjoy the things that you accomplish, the partnership, the loving relationships, of course, because this is gonna give you um, uh, also uh, more happiness or also uh, great moments, great experiences, but you have to build uh, the roots of the connection with the self through the eternal consciousness. So if those things vanish, you'll still be able to feel happy and, and feel contentment within. So we have, the third one is Raga, the fourth one is Vesa. And Vesa is translated uh, as aversion, sometimes as hate or a strong dislike. Let's put it this way, it's like strong dislike. And what Vesa means is when um, we are trying to avoid confronting our fears, we're trying to avoid facing our fears. So 
we avoid anything that makes us discomfort, either people, situations, experiences. We are avoiding pain. And through the teachings, they say that when you're able to face your fears, when you're able to uh, go through pain as a teaching, this is a very good way to grow, to evolve. Because pain is only a teaching. So if you try to avoid constantly to go into that place that gives you discomfort, then you won't grow out of whatever may be darkness within yourself. The way to uh, shine the light into darkness is to go into that space. You can't just pretend the darkness doesn't exist and um, keep flowing uh, without paying attention to that that is, that is uncomfortable for you or is painful for you because it's part of the experience. So once you're able to gracefully flow to also things that are not so comfortable for you, then you're able to grow. You're able to, yes, dissipate that darkness and shine the light. And this is the VESA. The VESA is when we're trying to avoid pain, we dislike things that give us discomfort and we're trying to avoid them. Um, and the fifth klesha is Avini Vesa. Avini Vesa is clinging to life, fear of death. Again, they're all related, right? So you believe to be this not truthful self, this identity of illusion of the self. This is the ignorance. Then the ego comes, Asmita. And the ego makes you act in a selfish way, as if you are not connected with everything around you and the source that, had, uh, that is creation. Then you build up attachments to what is not real, but you believe to be your identity, yourself. Then you want to push away everything that gives you discomfort to avoid pain. And eventually, of course, you are afraid of death. You want to hold on to this physical body, to this experience, to this uh, vessel that you are right now at this moment, uh, because you think that this is the, the ultimate life. You feel like when this physical body disappears, you as well disappear, which is obviously not correct. The teachings say that this is an, an incorrect identification with um, the mortality of the body as if it is the true self. The true self never ends. The essence continues to live through a connection with source, coming back to different bodies, different experiences, and different times, until at some point your soul does attain liberation, enlightenment, and then you're able to elevate with uh, closer to, to source um, spark. And then at that case, in that case, maybe you won't need to have another reincarnation experience to learn anything else because you are vibrating right at that at that level. Uh, so to avoid having to go uh, to go through all this um, experiencing um, the suffering of the ego, acting through the ego, acting through ignorance, acting through. Uh, being selfish, having fear to death. And that's why we practice yoga. We practice yoga to bring awareness. It doesn't mean that right away, or even in a process of many, many years, um, as, as really embodying the lifestyle of the yoga teachings, it will disappear like this. Because there are mechanisms of the mind that you need to be, keep continue be, uh, working with. But the yoga is the awareness. And once you bring this awareness to the self, once you understand, oh, what am I acting like this in this way? Um, I'm being ignorant, relating to something that I just accomplished and thinking that this is me, this gratification is me. When I know what me is deep inside, I have felt that I have connected, I see it every day. Then doesn't mean that you're not going to go to challenge yourself to accomplish certain things, of course. But you know they're temporary. You know they're just passing, passing by, passing through an experience. 
and then you're always coming back home to the true self, to the true source. And this is the, the idea of perpetuating these teachings of the yogic path, as for all of us understand why we come here to this earth, going through this experience the most uh, connected and genuinely um, feeling that, that absolute understanding that the essence, the consciousness, never changes, never dies, and it continues. And if you do live your life this way, you will have an amazing experience, because even the negative you will be grateful for. Even things that you're like, oh, what if this is happening to me? This is not something I want to go through. But if you understand that everything that comes to you in life is something that you must go through to learn, then you will be much grateful and you will manifest in a completely different way. All right, so I hope this was something that you uh, enjoyed. If you, I, I would like to name them one more time so we are clear. There's ignorance, ego, attachment, aversion, and fear of death. These are the five pleasures. Thank you for your presence. Namaste.